Hey guys, it's Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Today we're tackling hypertension, symptoms, interventions, and memory tricks, all to help you pass the NCLEX. And as you know, all my Simple Nursing members go into the membership and grab this cardiac study guide. And let's lower all that pressure. John is a 55-year-old truck driver who presents to urgent care with a throbbing headache, 8 out of 10 pain and intermittent episodes of blurred vision that seems to be getting worse for nearly a week now. Upon assessment, the nurse finds he smokes one pack per day and frequently eats fast food on his daily routes. His history includes type 2 diabetes times 20 years, stage 2 hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and a recent diagnosis of COPD. Oh snap! What is Don's main priority right now? And what must you, the nurse, prioritize in his plan of care? Make sure to pull out this study guide for this section so you can follow the key points. Today we're wrapping up hypertension, which is high blood pressure. So just think high tension on the arteries and vital organs. Now normal BP is 120 over 80. Systolic is on top and diastolic is on the bottom. So our memory trick is San Diego. Systolic is the squeeze and expansion of blood vessels under pressure. And diastolic is that decompressing, that relaxation of the vessels. Now in hypertension, we have high tension on the heart and blood vessels. So remember by saying anything over 140, the heart says, oh lordy. Now as far as your numbers, the elevated BP starts at 120 to 129 over 80. Stage one hypertension is 130 to 139. And diastolic is 80 to 89. Now we start taking major note when it gets to stage two, this 140 over 90. Remember, 140, the heart says, oh, lowity. Now hypertension crisis is anything over 180 systolic and 120 diastolic or more. Now this is super dangerous because it can cause brain damage and even a heart attack. Now as far as the signs and symptoms of hypertension, hypertension usually doesn't cause any signs or symptoms. Since it creeps up over time, we call this the silent killer. Now, if there are signs and symptoms, our three most common signs and symptoms on select all that apply questions and even on the NCLEX and nursing exams, use the acronym ABC. A stands for achy head or headache, and this can lead to a CVA stroke. B stands for blurred vision, also called retinopathy. And C stands for chest pain, which can indicate a heart attack. Now, again, severe hypertension is called our hypertension crisis. It starts with anything over 180 systolic and 120 diastolic. Now it's an emergency crisis since it can kill the patient and destroy the four main vital organs, the brain, the heart, the lungs, and the renals, basically your kidneys. So we give IV drugs immediately. So remember B, C, D, and E. B for beta blockers that puts the brakes on the heart, slowing it down. Our C is for calcium channel blockers. Remember calcium calms the heart and controls the blood pressure. D for dilators, like vasodilators. So remember, D for decreases the blood pressure, because remember, nitro acts like a pillow for the heart. Rest and relaxation. And lastly, E is for ER to ICU, since it's a crisis situation. Now for our causes, think hypertension, high tension on the heart and blood vessels. So we use the acronym SODA, like high pressure from a shaken soda can. S is from stress, smoking, and this sedentary sitting lifestyle. Our patients get very narrowed blood vessels, making them stiff. O is for obesity, and oral contraceptives, aka birth control, can cause hypertension. Now D for diet. The causes are usually high sodium and high cholesterol, since sodium retains water in the body, causing high fluid pressure. And cholesterol sticks to the blood vessels, which narrows those vessels, causing resistance. Now, D also means diseases, which we use the acronym Dr. H. Diabetes, which turns blood into mud from high sugar. Renal disease, which keeps fluid in the body and not in the potty. And especially heart failure. Again, fluid retention from a broken heart pump. Oh, and lastly, high cholesterol. Anything over 200 for cholesterol, a.k.a hyperlipidemia. And lastly, the A in our SOTA acronym, A for African American men and old age. These guys are both factors to increasing the risk. Now for complications, all this high tension from hypertension will destroy the arteries and organs. So we use the acronym again, ABC. A is for atherosclerosis, which I call artery scarosis. We have stiff, hard blood vessels from plaque buildup. Our second A is for aneurysms, which are bursting or bulging blood vessels. B is for broken kidneys, eyes, nerves, and heart. Broken kidneys is called renal failure. Broken eyes is called retinopathy. 
Damaged nerves is called neuropathy. And a broken heart is called heart failure. Lastly, the ultimate complications, which usually leads to death, C4 clots. So guys, remember, a clot in the brain, this is known as a CVA or a stroke. A clot in the heart, we call it MI or even a heart attack. And a clot in the lung, we call it a PE or pulmonary emboli. Now for imaging for hypertension, we're mainly looking for a big enlarged left ventricle. We call this left ventricular hypertrophy. So guys, think big, hard, trophy-sized heart. So we'd use a chest x-ray to measure the size of the heart. We can also do an echo to see also the size of the heart and to measure the amount of blood being pumped out of that left ventricle, something called ejection fraction. Now, normal is 55 to 70%. Anything below 40% usually indicates heart failure. Now, as far as the cardiac monitor, our ECG and EKG, we wanna see if the patient has tall R peaks. Big R peaks means big ventricular size. And lastly, a little side note. It's not imaging, but little rule of thumb. Three blood pressures one week apart is what the provider needs to officially diagnose hypertension. And that usually is a big test tip right there. Now, as far as blood labs, again, we're mainly looking for a big left ventricle as well as risk factors leading to hypertension. So we use the acronym BCC. B for BNP, known as brain nitritic peptides, they measure the wear and tear on the ventricles, and they kind of show how much stress and enlargening they're going through, AKA ventricular hypertrophy. So 100 and less is normal, 300 is mild, 600 is moderate, and over 900 is considered very severe. Now C is for our C-reactive protein, which shows total body inflammation, not really specific to cardiac inflammation. And lastly, C stands for cholesterol panel. So think C for clogged arteries cholesterol clogs the arteries. What we really wanna see is if the patient has risk for plaque buildup on the coronary arteries, the little oxygen tubes that feed the heart muscle. These numbers are huge on exams, so guys, please make sure to memorize these. 200, 150, 140. All numbers are bad and should be low, except this last one. 40 should be the only high one. This is our HDL, our happy lipids. So guys, total cholesterol has to be under 200, triglycerides under 150. Our LDLs are loser lipids under 100, and our HDL is the only one, the happy lipids over 40. Now a last little side note for cholesterol. All the bad cholesterol is obtained by only eating animal products, like meats, eggs, dairy, etc. But guys, fruits and veggies do not add cholesterol to the body. Huge test tip right there. Only animal products can clog the arteries. Get a full breakdown of what you need to pass the NCLEX with our NCLEX Review Lecture Series and live cram sessions, led by myself and industry experts. Now the very first line of treatment is usually lifestyle change, like diet and exercise. So guys, remember the acronym DRESS. D is for diet low in SCC, low in sodium, low in calorie, and low in cholesterol. R is for reduced alcohol and caffeine intake. E is for exercise, like walking 30 minutes, five days a week. Always shows up on tests, guys. 30 minutes, five days a week, usually walking. S is for stopping the smoking and the alcohol. And our last S is for stress reduction. Really big tip right there for the NCLEX. Now, as far as pharmacology, which always shows up on the NCLEX and always shows up on exams, guys, I can't stress this enough. If this is the only part of the video that you ever watch, I would focus on this. Be sure to have this study guide handy for this section, so you can follow the content and make this knowledge actually stick. So we use the acronym A, B, C, and D for blood pressure lowering drugs. Again, always on exams and NCLEX select all that apply questions. A is for ACE inhibitors that lowers the blood pressure. These guys end in pril, like lisinopril. So guys, think pril is like a chill pril for the heart. And so the blood pressure lowers, we have a rested and relaxed heart. Now our main side effects is ACE, which is kind of like an ACE inhibitor. A for angioedema, we get a swollen red tongue. C for a hacking cough, patient coughs like every five minutes. And E is for electrolyte imbalances. We have low sodium called hyponatremia and high potassium called hyperkalemia. Now our second A is for ARBs, which also lowers blood pressure. These guys end in sartan like low sartan. So guys, just think sartan sounds like relaxed man or sartan retirement plan. We have less workload on the heart and more relaxation to the blood pressure. They let out fluid out of the body and into the potty, so it decreases the blood pressure. 
Now B is for beta blockers. These slow the heart rate. They end in LOL like a tenolol. So guys think B for blocks beats or B for breaks on the heart. Or you can think since it ends in LOL, think L for lower heart rate. Now big caution before giving beta blockers that blocks the beats and slows the heart rate. Remember the four Bs. Bradycardia, anything below 60 heart rate or less, we cannot give this medication. B for bottoms out the blood pressure. Anyone with hypotension, we have to hold this medication. We can't give it. Beta blockers also constrict the bronchi, so any type of breathing problems, even a history of COPD or asthma, you can't give the drug. And lastly, blood sugar masking for hypoglycemic, this low blood sugar patients. So guys, big caution for diabetics. Always monitor their sugar closely. Now next is our C for calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers calms the heart. So think C for calms the heart and C for controls the blood pressure. Our famous three that show up on tests is nifedipine, cardizem, and verapamil. Now, defedipine ends in D-pine, so D-pine rhymes with break time, calmed and relaxed heart, lower blood pressure. Now, cardizem ends in zem, so think like yoga zen, like perfectly calmed and relaxed heart, lower blood pressure. And lastly, verapamil, think calm and chill, relaxed heart and low blood pressure. Next is D for diuretics, so think D for decreases the blood pressure by D, draining the fluid from the body into the potty, which also D, dehydrates the body. So guys, think a dried body. Now we have potassium wasting and potassium sparing diuretics. So for potassium wasting, we have furosemide and hydrochlorothiazide. Both of these rhyme with dried. Now we only give potassium wasters if potassium is normal between 3.5 and 5.0. Anything less than 3.5 is a big no-no. You don't give the drug. Now, potassium sparing diuretics, S for spironolactone, think S for spares the potassium. This guy blocks aldosterone directly to let fluid out of the body and into the potty. And it ends in tone, so think it blocks aldosterone. Now, spironolactone retains potassium, so avoid potassium-rich foods like green leafy veggies, fruits, and even salt substitutes. Big test tip right there. And our last D is for dilators, aka vasodilators. So think D for decrease the blood pressure by D dilating the blood vessels, making them wide to decrease vascular resistance. Our famous vasodilator is nitroglycerin. So guys, always think nitro is like a pillow for the heart, rested and relaxed, decreased blood pressure. Now a big caution, we can never give this if a patient is on Viagra or erectile dysfunction drugs. It will widen the blood vessels way too much and dropping the blood pressure so low it's going to kill the patient. Now last but not least, we have a different set of drugs that have nothing to do with blood pressure, but these guys help prevent plaque and clots. They help by preventing the clogging of the arteries. So think AC for anti-clogging of the arteries. A is for antiplatelets like aspirin and clopidogrel brand name Plavix, this guy prevents platelets from clumping together and forming clots. And C for cholesterol lowering drugs. Guys, these end in statin like lovastatin. So remember, stay clean because it cleans out the arteries, keeping them free from cholesterol. Now, since statins prevent the production of cholesterol in the liver, it is very liver toxic. So guys, don't give this to patients with liver problems like hepatitis or cirrhosis. Oh, and also avoid grapefruit juice since it blocks statin drugs. Okay, very last but definitely not least, when drugs don't work, then we use the ABCs of heart surgery to prevent a heart attack, AKA a clot in the coronary arteries, the little oxygen tubes feeding the heart. Now A is for angioplasty, which is a balloon or a stent placement to push aside the plaque, which allows more oxygen to the heart muscle. Or B is for bypass, or in fancy words, a cabbage, a coronary artery bypass graft. Just fancy words for going around the plaque filled arteries. And C is for cutting out of the fatty blockage, called the endartectomy. Now all these surgeries just do one thing. They help give oxygen to the heart muscle itself. All right guys, that wraps up our wrap up for hypertension. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides, packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by Nursing School Topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this 
and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.